This is Eric Rutan of Cannibal Corpse. You are listening to the Scars and Guitars podcast with Andrew McKay-Smith. G'day, everybody. Thanks so much for joining me. I have a conversation with Chris Bell to share with you. Chris is the photographer who worked with artistic director Nigel Wingrove for Cradle of Filth from 1992 to 1997. So his work includes the iconic Principle of Evil Made Flesh and Vampire album covers, the controversial for the time, maybe it still is, Vestal Masturbation Nun t-shirt, some of the Dusk and Her Embrace sleeve photos, and many, many more images adorning Cradle of Filth merch throughout that era. Chris's images, well, they gave Cradle of Filth a real advantage when it came to merchandising. His photography combined with the music gave the band something that no other band had back then. There's a lot of detail in this chat, and I was sharing my screen over Zoom with Chris, so you'll see that on YouTube, and for those of you listening via the podcast apps, well, it's still a very engaging listen. Chris is an absolute gent. I got a lot out of this chat. The deeper I go into the Cradle legacy, the conversations, they are just so rewarding. So here he is, Mr. Chris Bell. Thanks a lot for agreeing to do this. I really appreciate no, it. No, that's and fine. It's, uh, it's, well, so. it's an honour, I think. You know, I mean, it's, uh, I get so much interest for those from those images, and they were just a job years ago. Yeah. Well, I wrote it down. 1992, mm. that was shit. 92. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's very, very important that, to people. Well, yeah, I looked it up, and apparently, I, not long after that, the, the um, readers of Metal Hammer magazine... Hmm. Voted it uh, most iconic album cover of all time, which is pretty good accolade. Yeah, I know it's a very specialist magazine. You know, it wouldn't wouldn't have appealed to my mum, but uh, it, uh, <laughs> it, it you know it's it's a sort of yeah it's a, it's a, it's, a, it's an honour, you know. Cause, uh, no, it's lovely. No. It's it's lovely. And and look, the thing is, it's I, I'm 44, so I was around back in those days, and. Yeah. The artwork, Cradle of Filth's artwork, well, the music is one thing, of course. The music is the thing that attract, attracted initially yeah. heard it on radio. But your your photography allowed them to change the game with regards to merchandise. Now, I'm sure you've got some awareness of this, but heavy metal went through a very, it went through the doldrums effectively in Cradle of Filth. There are a couple of bands, Cradle of Filth, Sepultura, were the leading yeah. lights for a period of time there. But your, your photography allowed the group to stand out in an era where there wasn't much going on for heavy metal and your photography really helped create a new vibe, if you like, a new genre in a, in a way. Well, I, I'm, I'm, I'm thrilled that you said that because <laughs> um, to me it was a job, but I, I do like the imagery, though, I have to say, and um, mm -hmm. it all came through a guy called um, Nigel Wingrove, I don't know if you've heard of him at all, but yep. he 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 was already doing um he found that he could buy really cheap horror movies that nobody wanted. And we had this idea that we would release them as videos that people could buy. But he had a marketing, he said that we're gonna shoot a new image for each film. We can't use stills from the film because they don't exist. Some of these films are like nineteen hundred. 2010, you know, like the cabinet of Dr. Caligari, you know, I don't know if you know about horror movies, but it's a classic, you know, Nosferatu, another one, a mm -hmm. classic movie. So we shot images based on the movies and they sold like hotcakes. And this is in the old, um, you know, the big DVDs, the uh, whatever you call them, the, the ones with the tape. Yeah, and, the VHSs. And, and it meant you could get a good cover on it, you know, because they were a good size. And then when it went to CD, it wasn't so important because they, they were smaller. Yeah. But they really did sell. And, um, uh, you know, we were at one point, it, they sold so well that they were stacked. This might not sound a lot to you, but in uh, uh, is it Waterstones, one of the big bookshops, they stacked them face on not end on. And that was a big honour because it meant it took shelf space up. It meant that they were selling like hotcakes. And it was sort of the covers that sold them really because the films are rubbish. Yeah. <laughs> well, they, well, they were of their time anyway. So, uh, but if you yeah. like horror movies, you, you'd love these films, you know. And I'll then it, it moved on from there. And then somehow Nigel got involved with this band I'd never heard of called Cradle of Filth. And we uh, did the same techniques, you know, took a, an image and, 
uh, based on what the band was about in this case and just made it on, on the hoof, as it were. So, uh, yeah, yeah, it's oh, sort of, definitely. Sort of, sort of work. Yeah, I've actually reached out to Nigel, but I haven't heard back from him. Um, and oh, uh, right. I'd, love, I'd love to have a chat with him if you, I mean, if this goes well and you want to sort of give a reference, mate, I'd yeah. really appreciate it. But um, yeah, because I, I, out of the blue, he still owes me money, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> He's avoiding you. But, but that was Nigel. But I did I forget. But I rang him one day out of the blue and I still had his number and he picked the phone and said, Chris. Just like that, I hadn't spoken to you about five, six years or something. Hmm. And and I said, look, no, I'm not chasing the money. I just want to say, we're both getting older. We did some effing good work together. And, you know, you were, a, you, you art directed, but I made it work. Yeah. And together we did some bloody good stuff. And he said, yeah, I know. It was pretty good days, wasn't it? <laughs> and um, yeah. uh, so in a way, I always have a soft spot for him, even though he does owe me a couple of grand somewhere I think that's still but, the bastard but, yeah <laughs> Nigel if you're listening this pay up mate <laughs> on his <Yeah>. with interest <laughs> no I said to him no hard feelings because we, we and we did some work in fact one of the last things I did for him I got home and my wife said you look like death <laughs> and no one believes this about fashion photography or anything like it hmm. it's such hard work especially you know because you Nigel would come with an idea and, and we'd have a, there was a very good makeup guy called, I remember called Spencer Horn and he did makeup and makeup always takes forever. I mean, it just goes, you, they, people arrive at 10 and by one, you're just about ready to shoot because of makeup, you know, it goes on and on, but it, it, work, it works and we all work together on it. And um, I don't know, it was just a really nice, happy time really, you know, and we got some mm. really good stuff, but it was very, very tiring, very exhausting. I can, um, I can imagine even the quality of the images. Yeah, yeah. and it, it's very painstaking, yeah, because um, what seems small at the time, you realise as the photographer that is going to be a big thing. You've got to go with that that idea. And sometimes things happen because Nigel would come with sketches and everything and it was all, like, great. And that would be the, the good start point. But mm. then something would happen and you'd think, geez, that's brilliant. Let's go with that, go with that, go with that. More of that, less of that. And it, and it worked. Yeah, mm. on the on the day, and it was. Uh, yeah, and, um, work, and that 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 first that was one of the first covers. In fact, that uh, principal evil made flesh. Yep. And to be honest, I wasn't sure what I was going to do with that, and uh, and the lighting just worked. I don't, I've ever you, been able did, to reproduce it. <laughs> oh, it's a <laughs> it's a stunning photo. That's well, it, it's a classic. Yeah. It's 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 iconic. But did you have that done prior to the band asking you to do it? And Nigel asked, getting you involved, or was that something that came about through the association? Well, no, Nigel. Uh, he knew the band, and he said, "Yeah, Chris, you know, we've do, been doing all the the horror movie stuff, and we've got a new new gig now. It's uh, we've got this band in tow, and I didn't know they were." I guess it was quite early days. What was it, 92, did I say, or 90, yeah. whatever it was? 92, yeah. I don't know when, yeah, when, I don't know when they started exactly, but um, uh, <clears throat> we, all I got was some very pretty girls and some great costumes, and then the lighting just fell into place. It just worked. Um, and it was shot in, I had a smallish studio. Well, it's quite a good size, actually, but it was in... Uh, North Kensington in London, I don't know if you, mm. which is now extremely fashionable, but then was a bit of a dump. <laughs> but I had this studio, it was a sort of an old shop, but it was quite a good size, and we did it all there. Mm. And then as I got more and more work, bigger clients, uh, I moved to um, a much bigger studio in Camden Town, which you may have heard of, part yeah. of London. Yeah, definitely. Um, and, and that was on an industrial set. That was a really, it was like 1,700 square feet. It was massive. So we could build bigger sets. And um, I was prime myself. I could knock up a dungeon in an hour. <laughs> so that was all of your all of your imagery. So if, if I can just do a bit of a resume, a bit of a roll call of sure, the, sure. the stuff that's out there that people will know, the, the 90s era Cradle of Filth fans, that a lot of the people listen yeah. to my show, for example. So we've already mentioned the iconic The Principle of Evil Made Flesh cover and also yeah. the, the cover on the back of the CD and the vinyl too. Oh, sorry, the, the photography there. But you also did V Empire or Vampire, depending on how you want to pronounce it, uh, or Dark Fairy Tales. Sorry, the... Vampire or V Empire. You're also associated with that according to, according to a source online anyway 
Oh, right. I, I, I don't know what... See, what people do with the images often, I don't always keep up with because I'm onto the next job and they use it and I shoot it for the back and the cradle of filth or whatever it was. And, uh, and it goes and gets used and sometimes it's used in several places, but, you know, I, I don't really care. I, I always used to think that <clears throat> if you get a lot of mileage out of my imagery, they'll come back for more, <laughs> if you know what I mean. It wasn't... I'm not the sort of guy I say, oh, well, I shot every album cover. Now you've used it for something else. I want more money off you. I mean, I just said, look, you use it, you know. And, well, that's uh, an so interesting... where they ended up, a lot of them, I, Yeah, I that's an know. interesting point. I mean, I've, I've done studio work as a musician too and you record stuff and it's like, well, where does yeah. it go? I don't know, you know. And Yeah. But I, might, I might share screen quickly if that's okay. And the reason why I want to do that, I just want to make sure that we, for, just because people, the people who listen to my show are right into this stuff and they really want me to get it right now that I've got sure, this opportunity sure. to have a chat to you. So I'm just going to share my screen. Let me know if yeah. you can see it. Well, it's gone. All right. Yeah, I can see all that. So There's that's, one or two of mine in there I can see. Yeah. Yeah. So that's Vampire. Yeah. So this is all you. Uh, a lot of it. I can't see them all. I can see the girl with the blue candles. That's I recognise that one. Top I, left, I, I think. that T-shirt. Uh, Oh, I love that image. <laughs> I used to call her Nicole Kidman, a dark-haired Nicole oh, Kidman. Oh, yes, she is, yeah. Cradle of Phil Vampire of Dark Fairy Tales, yeah. Yeah. So yeah, this that's is a all shot you. The yeah, yeah, that's me. And um, uh, we're using uh, things called gobos, uh, which are – you. Um, I had like, really quite good lighting at the time, and um, I've still got it in my garage. I never use it, but it's all there. And well, you've got some metal cutouts, and you can project things like – Dungeons, bars, windows, it's all, you know, trickery. Mm. And there's Principal Evil I can see going through there. Um, yeah, indeed. And that, yeah, that was right shot there. black and white film, of course. There's, this is way pre-digital, all this stuff. Um, black and white film. Yeah, Stank. that was shot, it shot. I don't know if you, you know a bit about photography. It was shot on medium format um, Hasselblad camera, mm -hmm. uh, which were then the uh, what they used to call the Rolls Royce of cameras. They were Swedish. They were very expensive, but boy, they were bloody good. The lenses are Zeiss lenses, and they are just so sharp, mm. and uh, they pick up such fine detail. And I think that helps with the uh, and of course the images are square because the film is a square format. Okay, it's, it's right. not usual thirty five mil oblong shape. It's a square. Uh, six by six centimeters, and I've still got the original uh, little studio here now. Um, yeah, you can safely under lock and key. You you can buy. Um, you, are they? They're obviously prints, but you've you've. When I say prints, you're actually redoing the photograph, aren't you, or for, on your website for people? To yeah. Purchase. Well, what I did with them, I in the early days, of course, I had a dark room and would print in the traditional way with chemicals. But now I've got a. I invested. Uh, in um, scanners, and I got a very good scanner, and I scan from the original negative. And in the software, you can turn it to positive, and it, it does fantastic quality. Mm. And I've got a printer, which um, it just sounds obscene. It's got 12 inks, and each cartridge, I just bought some new ones, they're 77 pounds each. <laughs> That has 12 of them. So 12 times 77 to fill up the thing with ink is, yeah. uh, they are quite big cartridges, 130 mil, but they are stunning uh, ink quality. And uh, I think you get better quality than really you could have done with traditional uh, chemical film, mm. to be honest. Okay. And because I'm yeah. scanning from the original negative and then you can reverse that in the software to get positive and print from that. And it, it really does work. Mm. Um, it, you know, straight back to the original negative as shot in the camera. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm sure all of the, the, the technophiles out there who follow you. Oh, I've done uh, digital photography, so it's <laughs> yeah. different to some of the wonderful yeah. stuff that you've been up to. But was Black Goddess one of yours as well? Was she yours? What's that? Sorry? Was Black Goddess? I'm, I'm just sharing the screen now. Can you see? Black Black Goddess. Black... Yeah, I can see. It looks like when I'm out. I can't, I can't see it. Can I? I can pull it up. I'll see if uh, I can make it a bit bigger for you. It's, yeah, a, it's yeah. taken off a T-shirt, but yeah, all these it's images. Of filth. It, yeah, there it we go. Can you see it? I, oh, I don't know about that one. I don't know. It's had a lot of retouching that one, isn't it? Yes. Uh, I'm not sure. It, I mean, it might be the original, and they've done a lot of, um, you know, retouching. Uh, yeah. Uh, 
on that one. But I, you know, once they've got the image, they do what they want with it. Really, I'm not that fussy about it. So, yeah, uh, I, I get you. And this, this iconic yeah. photo here, this image here, that's one of yours as well. <laughs> Yeah, I remember the the logo. Jesus is a whatever, and um, yep. I did the, uh, the shot on the cross for that. There was a little bit that was about as tasty as it can possibly get, but <laughs> it was. Um, I suppose it got them noticed within that world. I don't know, you know. What's um, what's the story behind that one though? Was that something that did Nigel? Do you, I mean, I understand he had a lot to do with uh, the the artistic direction and the like. But was this Danny Phil yeah. or someone in the band <laughs> giving you? Saying, Let's I'm really do this. not sure. I, I think it. It. Uh, I. Sh- I shot the image, <clears throat> and um, in the studio, I think the girl was sort of crucified, and they did all the the, the words and stuff. And uh, I, you know, it's, it, they. And I mean, they love nuns and all that. It's all. It's all pretty tasteless. But in a way, I'm, <laughs> I'm not particularly religious, and hmm. it's um, it's it's powerful imagery, I suppose. Uh, well, it's still but, here. Yeah, I do remember Thirty that. years later. 30 years later, can you believe well, it? Yeah, I, I used to sort of dine out on the fact that I'm the only photographer who people got arrested wearing his T-shirt. So <laughs> I, <laughs> so true. <laughs> but I don't, I don't think I brag about it too much these days. But, uh, yeah, a lot of those images do look um, look familiar, I have to say. What were your thoughts on that well, back was, in the day, though, that the, the kids were getting – Effectively, I mean, they were in fairly sketchy areas like, you know, the equivalent of King's Cross in Sydney in London. I think it might be Camden, I don't know. But they're getting arrested yeah. in places where there's a lot of drug taking and a lot of other debauchery going on, yet the yeah. T-shirt was the thing that attracted the police's attention. Yeah, I can imagine. It's. Uh, I mean, I, I had no idea that was what they were going to put on that, you know, so I'm sort of a bit innocent on that one. But um, it, it, it got them noticed, I suppose, and who knows what that world is about. You know, um, as far as I can remember, they were all middle class boys. Yes, I remember right. one of the band. Yeah. I don't know if I should say this. He said, "God, I'm actually quite embarrassed if my mum finds out what this music's about." <laughs> <laughs> and I thought it was quite sweet, actually. <laughs> Yeah, and, uh, I've, I've spoken to a lot of them, and they're to, to a person, um, all, yeah. all of the musicians. Uh, Danny's a bit of a different character. He's the, you know, obviously the leader of the group, but all of the musicians are just fantastic guys that, that I've spoken to. Yeah, so, yeah, they were very guys. nice. And uh, I don't know, they had an image, and um, it, it, it worked for the fans and stuff, and they perhaps took it further than most of the heavy metal bands. I don't know, but it mm. um, they're certainly uh, – do they still perform? Are they still um, – Playing. Yeah, there's a uh, look. In my opinion, there's a version of the band going these days. It's uh, it's uh, it's not a legacy act at the moment, but it's uh, it's it's close to a legacy act in that it, the band has never broken up, but they've cycled through. I last count, I think they're up to 40, 41, 42 tenured members, which is which is probably the most of any band currently still relevant. Yeah. So it's Danny is at the head of the band and. Uh, there's, there's the '90s era still attracts a lot of attention from people of my era. Okay, mm. the, the the band at the moment um, hasn't doesn't really have anything to do with the band that was around back then. The people that you you were associated with, mm. you know. Yeah, so. I know that on my website, the the images that sell are usually the heavy metal stuff. <laughs> the uh, Oh, you've seen, you got it there, yeah. Yeah, look at this Look um, at this iconic photo here. I, I'll never forget seeing that on a T-shirt, the Cradle of Hills T-shirt, just an iconic Do you know, uh, half those snakes were real. Really? Wow. Yeah. Amazing. Um, and then you even see a little bit of movement on one or two of them. There were some plastic ones put on to give it base, but that, that, that one going over her shoulder and one or two in the top were the real McCoy. And if you look carefully, there's actually a slight little bit of movement on them. And I can see the one around the neck, yeah. Yeah, they, they were the real thing. And um, with some uh, plastic ones, just for the real ones to sort of slither through. Mm. And how these girls put up this stuff, I don't know. And if you look at the Python one, I don't know if you've seen Girl with Python is on that set uh, there. Yes, where is it? Um, I have seen it. it. Yeah. Um, Right. Yeah, it's there somewhere. Go yeah, with Python. Where's she gone? Oh yeah, top right. There she is. Yep. Yeah. Did they use this one as well? I mean, it looks familiar, but I can't recall to be honest. So I'm not sure what they did, but that was a real Python, mm. and it came with a handler, 
And during the shoot, it started to constrict. Mm. And that was a powerful, look at the size of that thing. And yeah. it, it, I, it didn't know if he got a little bit tense or a bit frightened. And the guy ran over and sort of ripped it off her and said, she, who, 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 can we stop for a bit here? Hmm. Uh, Sorry, my daughter's just it running. It started to um, compress. She went, oh, it's getting a bit tight. Hmm. <laughs> and yeah, that's, that's a, a really, uh, yeah. I wonder why they didn't use it. I don't know where it, it got used. I really don't know. Um, maybe on a T-shirt. I, I don't know. But hmm. what some of these models put up with, I mean, like, God, you know, they say women are scared of stuff, but, God, I couldn't do any of that. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't do it either. I mean, that's a, it's yeah. an amazing photo. I'll just bring this up here just so people can see it all, uh, yeah. in the flesh. But, I mean, it's it's just such a it, – it's an enduring image, this one, really, isn't it? I mean, the flowers and everything, no, no band had used any image even remotely close to this ever yeah. before this. Really? No. It, well, as I say, the there, there are style people involved, but the the actual arrangement and lighting, um, in fact, I found a way of lighting it. I don't think I've ever been able to replicate it. It's really weird. Mm. It's, it just happened on the day. Um, the lighting is actually coming from below more than anywhere you, you can see. Ah. Mm. The, uh, rather than the classic thing is have lights to the side or above. And it's sort of coming from below, and I think that gives it a sort of uh, rather scary feel to it. But at the same time, it's very soft lighting. It's not hard. Mm. Um, is, that, is that corn syrup, the, the blood effect? Is it what, sorry? Is it corn syrup? Corn syrup that you've used uh, it's it? a stage blood, I think. Yeah. And um, and I, I my nickname for Nigel was uh, More Blood Wingrove because he'd say, More blood, <laughs> more blood. <laughs> And squirt more and more on. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, yeah. He, I guess he, he knew what he wanted. And uh, but again, it, it was yeah, it was just stage blood. You know, you can buy all that stuff from. Um, well, I think London's got a massive theatre district, and you know all yeah. that stuff is available in them. Um, uh, which is good for photographers. You know, uh, you can get all sorts of props and things that. Um, uh, the, the the general public don't know exist. You know, wouldn't know where to get them. Yeah. So. Do you recall yeah, anything know. anything about the Vampirotica label that Cradle of Filth launched? Because that looks like one of yours as well. There, uh, I can't remember that. Uh, it does look familiar. I don't know whether I can't really see it. Cradle of Filth. Can I? Uh, oh yeah. Van- Vampirotica was a label yeah. that they launched. It was very very yeah. short lived. See if I can bring that up. There we go. There she is. Okay, yeah. It does look familiar. It looks like one of my backgrounds, so the grey with the dapple on it, yeah. But, um, again, what <clears throat> people did, um, yeah, it does. I think I remember seeing that girl uh, with that outfit on something or other. Yeah. But, um, but it, it's great that they got a lot of use out of the images. You know, we shot loads of stuff on the day, and if they got more use out of it, I used to think, well, great, they'll come back for another shoot, you know, cause you, you, they're getting their money's worth. And, um um, so is that right? Things. They're all all from one from one f- session, if you like, one eight nine hour period. You're able to get all of these images that they use. Well, <laughs> yeah, we we did loads of shoots, though. I mean, there was always mm. they were always at the studio at one point. Nigel doing stuff. So, <clears throat> but it did take a long time um, to get um, <clears throat> you know makeup to two or three hours. You'd never get shooting before midday one o'clock. Mm. And then it would go on, and um, and and in a way, yeah, got load. Nigel got loads and loads of stuff, and what they did with it, it you know, I'd, sometimes I've forgotten the shoot, but um, mm. some of it looks familiar, some of it doesn't. Um, I'm sure, they use other photographers at some point. Yeah. Well, it seems to be mimicking your work either way, though. I mean, that's the point. You set the tone very early on with Principle of Evil and it's just carried on yeah. right up till <clears throat> just before Midian, I think. Uh, yeah, it's probably fair well, I think that was one of the first things I ever did for them, that one. It, uh, that was the very first shoot I did for them. Mm-hmm. And it must have worked because they certainly came back for more. Um, and uh, I sometimes look at stuff and I say, no, that's not my lighting. <laughs> It's a bit crude. Yeah, you can tell. But, uh, <laughs> I, I really wouldn't, is, wouldn't know. That. 
This is stunning too. This one here. I always, as a kid, I remember looking at this and just the way you captured. Yeah. You brought the theme over from principal. It's almost like is this is this one of the same girls? Can you recall from principal? It looks his- very similar. I, it looks like it could have been done the same day because the uh, gauze looks uh, like a prop we had and um, mm. and the, the the flowers in the hair. It might have just been a little shoot. We did quickly do that, get that done, get it in the can. Um, and I forgot all about it, but it looks like my work, I have to say. Because um, I do look at other work and I say, that's not mine, it's a bit crude. Mm. <laughs> lighting. Yeah. Like, um, yeah. you know, the lighting's a bit, um, I don't know, a bit basic. Yeah, yeah, not, not don't Umbe- Umbrella-like, I say. They call it umbrella-like, <laughs> which is too, it's just too soft. I never used, hardly ever used an umbrella. I used um, uh, what they, in the tray they call a fish fryer. Okay. <laughs> it's a, like a big metal box with a perspex, which is much harder than an umbrella, but not mm. really hard like a spotlight. <clears throat> and um, and uh, they're, they're more expensive, but I, yeah, I was invested in good stuff and uh, it made a difference. Umbrellas are a bit amateurish, I thought. You know. I mean, they can work, but not always. Mm. So, um, what do you recall he, about this one here? This image here. What one's this? Uh, Dusk and her embrace. I crazy feel. I don't know any about that. That that would have been massive. Uh, I've never went out on location with anything like that. I don't think so. I don't. I don't think it some, is. I was. I was looking at it. I think the tree is, but I think they've superimposed this business on the back. You yeah. Know, Photoshop or what have you here, but I think it she, looks like a Photoshop job. Yeah. And I don't recognise that costume or anything it's uh it's been cobbled together i mean it's fine enough but um hmm. uh it, it, i don't think that's anything to do with me that one that's yeah. interesting because it is credited to you in various places online so when i go oh, into really? the wiki yeah when i went into oh, the right. wikipedia page i'll just yeah. go, go onto the wikipedia page and i'll show you what i've uh this is the interesting yeah. thing is I don't, I don't know who updates wiki i mean when i say i don't know anybody can update wikipedia but your name is down here as as uh, being responsible oh, right. for the photography. Oh yeah. So I got yeah so Arlene Daly. I remember. And, yeah. Arlene Daly. She was all low. Nigel Wingaviego, art director. Simon Miles. Well, he's another photographer. Salvador Mazzoni. Uh, so Simon yeah, must have done the front, and you've done the back. I'd say. I think that's yes. Yeah, I what really don't know. Here. Yeah. Kit Morgan. Uh, so he the, passed away. I don't know whether you met him, but he passed away last year. No, I, I don't think I uh, met him at all. Yeah. Um, I think and Nigel Wingrow, I, I rang him about a year or two ago and he's still, hey, you know, doing well. So Still doing um, his thing. There you go. Yeah, he's still got yeah. a pretty big entry here. You've got a good entry too on Wikipedia from memory. Hang on a second. Have uh, I? Oh, I didn't know that. Uh, you, I'm sure you did. Hang on. That's not there now, but I thought that's where I yeah. got yeah, um, but uh, there's two of you. There's two Chris Bells that are excellent at photography. There's one in Tasmania and there's yourself. So all right. <laughs> if people Google, they, uh, so I had to put Cradle of yeah. afterwards to pick it up. <laughs> but this is uh, yeah, Encyclopedia but... Metallium here, and this is yeah. a source that a lot of metal fans go to for their uh, – as a single source of truth. So, yeah. So they've got yeah. uh, photography cover, so they so they've got that quite right. But yeah, it's just yeah. I like the detail photography, you know, back or whatever it might back of the sleeve or yes. whatever it might be, or the cover. Yeah, because photographers, you know, we photographers can't work without art direction and and people to arrange models and all that stuff. But hmm. at the final instant, when you've got the girl, the camera, the light, and you press the button, that's totally the photographer and one fraction of a second either side of that moment sometimes just isn't that good you know there is just um well let me how much you know about photography there's a famous very famous um french photographer Henri Cartier Bresson Mm -hmm. and um he, he was a reportage photographer didn't do anything like you know we're talking about but he said that in every photograph there is a decisive moment, moment decisive, you know, French. Um, and one fraction of a second, either side of that, it's not the same photograph. Mm. And he was, he, he, I think he's dead 
Uh, but he was a great, anyone who's interested in has got to see his work, Cartier Bresson. I'm sure uh, any photography students would look, look at his work. He did all 35 mil black and white, what, what we call reportage photography. Um, and some uh, just wonderful images. And uh, I think his entire body of work from a whole lifetime was uh, about four under 500 images. Shows you how difficult it is to get that sort of imagery. And um, I don't think he ever did studio work or anything like that. He was just, uh, just a pure uh, press photographer, basically, but taking it one step further. Mm. And um, But this idea, this, there's one fraction of a second that you press the button. Either side of that, it won't be the same. And if that's a skill, then that's what you have to aim for as, as a photographer. You know? What, what it was means the, total concentration all the time on the on the model and the way it's all working together. Uh, I, I studied it at uni. I did two subjects so for a journalism degree, and yeah, it was extraordinarily difficult. But these days, it's it's, it's you're still using uh, you know uh, DSLR cameras as well. But it's actually morphing into <laughs> these things. I don't know. You're probably horrified that it's going into iPhone photography and the like. But it's more as a yeah. journalist, you've sort of got to be in the moment and learn how to capture photography with the tools you've got at your disposal. Yeah, this sort of thing. But but for you, what was the what was the catalyst? What was a compelling event for you to get engaged in as a career photographer uh, <clears throat> I just fell in love with it I um when I left school I was a would you believe it's a quantity surveyor <laughs> just, uh, and I decided after a while I did not want to spend my life counting bricks which is sort of what they do really mm -hmm. um uh, they they run the the financial and the ordering side of a construction site, which was quite fun at first because you'd be out there with the lads measuring the work and all the rest of it. And as you got further up, up the greasy pole, you ended up more in the office. And the one thing I didn't want to do was be in an office. Hmm. And uh, I, I jacked it all in and um, got a job org organising an arts festival because the one thing Conti Savaz can do is organise stuff. And uh, the, the Kensington Chelsea Arts Council wanted to organise an I did it and with and in that pit I met artistic people and I thought I have found my people at last mm. and and I and I think I bought a camera to record some of the projects we did like street theatre and all sorts of stuff and I fell in love with photography I jacked that in and went to uh, Ealing Technical College and did a three year course with a load of really boring old fogies but boy did they know how to print. Mm. And all that old, that stuff, and I got yeah. that under my belt, and then I got a, a bursary to the Royal College of Art for two years, mm -hmm. and that was all about fine art photography, and I learned a lot there, and um, so, uh, and that was quite prestigious, I suppose. So I've got an MA actually in photography, for what it's oh, worth. Oh wow, fantastic! Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's, um, uh, and I, uh, but I wasn't doing anything. I was doing uh, landscape photography, <clears throat> but when you hit, hit the real world you got to make a living. So I did all sorts of stuff. And uh, as you learn more and more, you get more confident and, yeah. and ended up in the studio, doing studio work for people like Nigel, among others. You know. Well, you've got, you've got a, a lot of portfolio work. Yeah, of landscape stuff and you've got the reportage stuff that you've been doing as well. You've got yeah, that's what I really love to do is reportage photography. Uh, or as people now call it, street photography. I refuse to use it. I use the old-fashioned term, reportage. So, uh, <laughs> um, or reportage and, and if you're a bloody Australian. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> Never mind. Yeah. I don't know if I can show you here a picture. I've still, I think, would I, if I hold this up, will you see it? I think so. Yeah. Um, Ah, yeah, right. Okay, that's pretty much. This is a shot I did very recently in a shopping mall. And I don't know if there's an influence of... Can you, I don't know, I can't see what I'm actually holding up here. I can see what looks like a lady in a burqa. I think it is standing in the walking past a shop front. Hang on. But it looks yeah, and look at the guy. It's, it's, um, it's a sort of gaming shop. Mm. And there's this monster sort of mannequin in the window. And he looks like scary, you know. I don't think you can see it there. Yeah, I can see it. And she's looking, walking, and, and I would say, if you just hang around, something happens. And a woman came by and she looked like, she looked at me and like, what was this guy taking pictures in a shopping mall? And 
it, it, it sort of worked, you know, but it's still that imagery of like really scary. It's, it's, it's a big sort of a mannequin in the window, you know, mm. advertising some sort of scary game, you know, I don't know what it is, but it sort of worked uh, as an image. And, um, but you're very so, good at taking photos of water as well, I've noticed. Water, yeah, yeah. right. Yeah, if you look at the uh, the website, I guess there's uh, stuff, and I still there's take few, pictures. Yeah. I still we go out and we spend some time in the Lake District now, my wife and I, and uh, go up there and uh, take some landscapes and uh, or just whatever happens. I still prefer people, you know. In, uh, mm. But but for for selling. Uh, on my website, the thing that sells most is um, the heavy metal stuff, <laughs> the erotic stuff, and then landscapes. You know, um, people uh, just like uh, just pretty landscapes, I suppose. You can't blame them. You've got to stick something on the wall in your house. It's got to be something a bit pleasant. Um, but I, I do get that, that image, um, Principle of Evil, uh, does sell, and I... People seem to love it, and I, I and people often will. They will they, uh, there was a guy in Austria bought one recently, and he sent me the picture. I'm so proud of it, hanging on his wall in his in his hall at home, hmm. because it's a great A2 image, and he's got it framed beautifully. He said, oh, "I love it." Everyone remarks on it, and um, and uh, you know, it's an original print signed by me and all the rest of it. So, um, but they're the ones people seem to like. It's, so, it's still a great following for that sort of imagery. I think. And is it mainly um, Europe and North America and even Australia that, that you're sending the photos to? Yeah, a lot of, um, I think Germans seem to like all that imagery a bit. <laughs> and Austrians, <laughs> for some reason. <laughs> uh, and, um, uh, yeah, and of all the sales, I think very often it's it's the uh, the erotic gothic section, as I call it. And uh, yeah. people yeah. tend to sort of go for that. So. But whether my wife approves, I'm not sure. But I'm not really- <laughs> <laughs> well, if it's paying the bills, I mean, let's face it. I mean, you know, we've all got to turn a quick well, side yeah, out. Well, you know? it's, yeah, well, I, I do it now. I mean, it, it, I've got a little studio in the garden there, and it's just got this printer and the and the uh, Photoshop stuff and all that. And um, so it's not big enough to shoot in, but I can. If anyone orders a print, I can uh, bring it up. You know, they're they're already scanned a lot of them, and then and make the print, and then post it off, and. Um, so, uh, but I, did, you know, I thought I was going to make a fortune. But there's not many people buy it; just occasionally so one. But I don't, I don't mind really. So. Yeah. This, but I still quite like shooting, and um, yeah, uh, when I can. Well, so, well just uh, with the, the gothic erotic stuff. I mean, I know I know that Ben worked with uh, Stu Williamson with Cruelty and the Beast. Uh, so after you, do you know why they didn't why they didn't uh, return and work with you again? Because they're they're on like a third. I know Vampire's an EP, but it's a bit longer than that. So, really. Oh, with the band? Yeah, Cradle of Filth. Yeah, do you know why the yeah. fourth album, they didn't work with you? No idea. I have no idea. I mean, it, it, uh, I didn't think too much about it at the time. Maybe they fell out with Nigel. I don't know. I, I Maybe that. And he was the go-between between me and them. I I, I don't know. I really don't know. Um, uh, I know I, I did see some of the illusion. I thought it looked a bit crude. Dare I say, you know, um, a bit sort of in your face rather than a bit, you know, subtle. Um, but yeah. I, I, that's all I know, really. I, I, you know, um, yeah, the contrasts are much greater with his photography than they are with yours, that's for sure. Yours are far more natural. Yeah, I, I did see some work that they'd had done that looked a bit, uh, uh, yeah, a bit fussy, a bit too fussy, a bit too in your face. and. Uh, um, anyway, I you know, I moved on. Well, it was all over. Yeah, it was all over by year two thousand. By the time they released Midi, and it didn't. I mean, the Midian album cover. There's plenty of people that disagree with me on this, but the album yeah. itself and the and the cover was night and day compared to the work that you did you did with them, and even what Stu Williamson did with them, and uh, the merchandise just shifted as well. And a lot of yeah. fans have have made that point with me over messages message. Uh, services, mm. Instagram and email and what have you, said, hey, do you know where we can get these, you know, Vampirotica? And it's all the stuff that you had a heavy hand in. And oh, uh, right. I say, no, I mean, you've got to go to eBay and buy them sometimes for $200. And I wish I, I had it. I had a bunch of T-shirts <coughs> back in the day with your images like, the, you know, the, uh, I call it yeah. the Nicole Kidman shot. And- oh, well, I, 
They all fade down. And I had a load of t-shirts <laughs> stuck in the in the in the cupboard in the studio, and I think I chucked a lot of them out. They went mouldy, and and I've oh. I've still got a few. I think I've got a t-shirt from the Rape of Europe tour. I think, <laughs> which <laughs> is probably quite a collector's item now. Um, so I put that to one side. I thought, well, who knows? I might you know, sell it at yeah. some point, or just keep it as a you know, as a memento at the time. I just um, never understood why the band didn't didn't continue on in in the in you the the way the photography that you'd introduced to the band, and it was mm. so successful from 1993. Really, that's when the, mm. the band started to become prominent. 1994, even you'd probably say, mm. to about 1999. That's when that that's when those images are so prominent. You couldn't go to a metal gig anywhere, any band, without seeing your photography on the on the Cradle of Filth really? t-shirts. <laughs> But then they stopped it. Then they stopped doing it, and it was like, what? What happened? You know, the whole the the band lineup changed, and right. the art direction changed as well. So it was like like what I said up top about you know you asked yeah. me the question about are the band still going? It feels like it's a very different band now compared to what it was say twenty five mm. years ago. Yeah, not well, like, not like Iron Maiden, you know, who virtually are similar, you know, from forty years ago. Yeah, well, they don't go away. I mean, I'm, I'm still a big fan. When I were a lad, there were there were the biggest decision you had to make whether you went with the Beatles or the Stones, and I was definitely a Stones person. <laughs> oh, good on you! I Same guess we, yeah. Um, the, although I have to say that the very first time I heard "Is It Love Love Me Do," I thought, "God, this is great." Compared with the awful schmaltzy stuff my dad used to listen to, you know, Nat King Cole and all that stuff. Oh God, yeah. And then then when I heard The Stones, do you know, I think I've never been as shocked as when I watched a programme called, was it Six Five Special or something? It was on ITV hmm. and The Stones were on and they had shoulder length hair and I was like physically shocked that anyone could have hair that long. It was, <laughs> this must be 1962, three, four, I don't know when it was. Uh, and now, of course, nobody cares what people have, but it, it was absolutely shocking in its day. And mm. uh, yeah, and they were a great band, and I still like them. Um, so, uh, but they've got a particular energy, <laughs> yeah. Oh, it'd be great for you to work with them, but I, I agree with you, they've got a particular energy, the Stones, haven't they? They're a bit like you, too, yeah. in that they can release bloody awful albums, but when you go and see them live, you're like, wow, it's they've still got it, yeah, yeah. Well, I, I sometimes I'm sort of feeling a bit bored. I will go on. I mean, if you've not seen it, it's 1997 St. Louis, the Stones doing Miss You. Mm. And it goes on for about 15 minutes. And there's a saxophone solo in it. It's just, just makes you tingle, your blood tingle. And they, mm. they, the Stones are very good at holding it back. Just when you think it's going to go, they, they know that. Wait a bit longer. Wait a bit longer. And by the end, he Jagger is just brilliant. He's got the audience absolutely in hysterical, waiting yeah. for this thing to to go. And then when it goes, wow! It's 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 easy on YouTube. Nineteen ninety seven, St Louis. I'll check it out. Yeah. yeah, it's really good. And uh, he's it's quite he's long so unusual. Set. Yeah, but he's, he's so unusual, Mick Jagger, because what is he? He's almost 80, I think, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. And he's got the body of a 20, 21 year old. He's a little, he's a little guy. Know. You know, he's, he's a little strong constitution, but yeah. he keeps all of his yeah. energy ready for the stage. And I know he's a martial artist as well. So, yeah. You know, yeah. So. But I don't know how uh, the, the heavy metal fans would like the Stones. They probably think it's all old hat, or I don't know. Much too much about the the modern move, you know, the modern scene. Really, it's fairly um, open minded. You'd be surprised these days. I mean, I've got a huge Pink Floyd collection, and I've got a huge jazz collection, John Coltrane and stuff yeah, as well. And yeah, metal just yeah. me, the thing about metal is, it's just a there's a community with metal, and there's not as much of a community with other genres of music. You couldn't say there's a funk mm. community. There's probably there might be yeah. a funk community of musicians, and I'm a bassist myself, so I'd love that. But it's uh, the 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 com- the fan community in particular, especially the musicians themselves who are fans, mm. they're a very mm. unique breed, very fantastic people. I think most of the people that I communicate with are musicians as well. So yeah. they um we people who have skin in the game 
are very interesting to Ooh. talk to. And I think you'll find that they'll like this part of the chat, you know, talking about the Stones. And uh, it's, a lot yeah. of us don't like the Beatles, believe me. I can't stand them. I can't uh, listen to them. For Beatles, now they're dated years. really a lot. Really. Absolutely. But, yeah. yeah. But the Stones are still in there going and um, uh, great musicians. And uh, uh, very sad that, uh, you know, Charlie Watts passed away, but that seemed to mm. have dealt with that. And it's... Um, yeah, they're still there. So, yeah, it's like ACDC, you know, it's as long as Angus is still there, the band's just going to keep chugging mm-hmm. along, which I think is wrong, by the mm-hmm. way. I, I, I've been reading but, the... But out of interest, are the yeah. Cradle still doing gigs and still big? I mean, I because I don't know what they're up to, really. Um, yeah, they're they still, still perform? Doing, yeah, still performing. They, they tour everywhere. Yeah. But when I say it's really... The Cradle of Filth a long time ago morphed into... The Danny Filth show, if you like. So Daniel Davies oh, right, right, right. a singer. So it's so yeah. common within bands for that for that to occur. It can be the guitarist or yeah. singer usually. But with a yeah. with a band like them, it it long ago morphed into that. But it's a it's a pantomime in so far as literally every if you were to average it out, it'd be something like every eight eight months or something like that, a band member turns over. And, oh really? Yeah. yeah, and and I got to know some of some of their members uh, quite. I, I do know. I, I knew Stuart Ansis, mm. who unfortunately passed away last year. Lovely, mm. lovely guy. You might have probably inter, inter, interfaced with him. Uh, yeah. Very tall guy. Very tall guy. And uh, the guitarist and uh, and Paul Alender, the other guitarist as well, who wasn't in the band with Stuart. Mm. Yeah, because often band members did come to the shoots. They were interested in what you know you were doing. Um, yeah. Danny was always there. And then other guys, and they were around. You chat to them. I didn't really know, who, but they yeah, so, yeah. they were interested in what was you know the imagery that we were making at the time. So it was quite important. Yeah, um, D- Danny's done really well for himself from the perspective mm. that he's kept a band on the road and going. It's just whether or not, as a yeah. fan, you want to keep tuning into what he's doing. And you know, some bands yeah. keep keep their shit together, like the Stones and Cradle of Filth. Really hasn't. It just doesn't have the same vibe as what it had in the nineties. And and part of that's completely understandable because Danny doesn't write music, so he relies on people to come in and write the music for him. And I, and I know that oh, because right. I've spoken to all of the musicians, and I tend to find that's the case. Like more these bands might not be familiar, but Morbid Angel, for example, have had a lot of member changes too. <clears throat> but the bloke who writes the music has been in there the whole time, so there's a thread mm-hmm. through the entire career, the last the 35 year career, from the debut album to the last release. It sounds kind of yes. similar. Cradle of Filth, it's not like that. It's um Danny's voice has changed a lot. And you know, the bloke John Kennedy, who I think uh I, I'm trying to get him on the show actually, but rumor has it he's the or well, internet, mm. you know, forums uh saying mm. that he's the guy who introduced the Banshee Shriek. You might recall that Cradle of Filth Danny used to use a lot. And so it was uh I'm trying to get John on to sort of confirm that. And uh but there, there are uh, one, one thing I've always found with the Cradle alumni, you, you know, all fantastic people, all so easy to talk to, like, like the chat we're having now, and very yeah, willing yeah. and forthcoming to tell me things. And uh, they know that I'm not, I'm genuine and I'm, I'm just trying to get, yeah. you know, trying to try to share information, if you like, because I'm a, I'm a journal, I'm a yeah. journalist, I'm a qualified, you know, as they qualified, I went through uni and became a journalist. So yeah. I've always had that in, intense interest, if you like, in, in certain things. And, uh, Cradle of Filth just seems to have such a rich history and you're a significant part of it. So that's why this chat's so great. Well, it's nice to know. I mean, because as I say, one did the shoot and I did like, I have to say, the images were successful. I was proud of them and they worked. And we shot loads and so there must be loads more out there. I mean, I, um, because it was the days of film, I do have all the negatives. So uh, I would give a print. Mm. For the uh, that's the way it worked in those days. Uh, now, of course, you would uh, upload the uh, the file, digital file, and people got it that way. But then it was um, you would shoot, process the film, mm. make contact sheets, send those off, and then they would choose what ones they wanted, and then you make prints, and that went, and then you you gave them a real good print that they could scan for the. T-shirts or whatever it was, or the album mm. covers. So it was a, quite a different way of working then. And, um, well, I'll just plant the seed on that. Oh, sorry, you go. Yeah. No, it's all right. You carry on. Yeah. Oh, I was just going to say, I'll plant the seed on this one. Look, I, I know the fans, the the people that are into the era that you were so much of a significant part of. 
I, I can't tell you how much they'd appreciate if you would release a lot of those images in a coffee table book. If it was financially viable for you to do it, when, you know, yeah. you got the energy yeah. and the inclination. But I mean, those images are—I've said it a few times—they're iconic, and and but it's beyond that. They're really important to us because they're such a significant part of our youth, mm. you know, and and something that's yeah, because it must. Of, you saw it, yeah, there must be loads of images that were sort of outtakes. They weren't used for an album cover or anything big, but they are still around. And um, yeah, of that, you're on my website, the erotic gothic section has got a lot of them, a lot of them, but there's loads, loads more that uh, sitting in folders in there. Well, in fact, it's interesting you, what you yeah, yeah, I mean, if you're looking to make another, look, fans love it. And because it's you, right, I mean, you're the guy. We know it if you've done right. <laughs> We know you're not gonna yeah. you're not gonna do it badly. I mean, I bought a bloody Motorhead vinyl the other day, and it's absolutely it's not, nothing to do with Phil or Lemmy or Mickey or any of those guys. Yeah. It's absolute garbage. I mean, it's not even a yeah. hundred and eighty gram vinyl, and it's been one hundred and fifty bucks Australian for it. So what's that about seventy, eighty quid? Yeah. Um, but it's you know all this live crap in it. But who cares? Like I mean, yeah. I can listen to all of that on YouTube anyway. Yeah. I want I've got a good vinyl player here behind me. You know, just over here, mm. sort of buried underneath everything. But it's mm. uh, it, it sounds fantastic, and and that's where we get annoyed as fans is when the actual original creator has nothing to do with the stuff that's brought to market. And in your case, mm. you've got all of these incredible images that that mm. are um, filed away. But for the fans, I, I, I can tell you, um, Chris, well, they I mean, would I love to see. Them. Them. Yeah, yeah the, the other maybe ones. Put more up on the on the website because they've got loads more, you know. And I do that, but it was just weird because I, you know, it always seems to me that heavy metal or metal music is it's not exactly secret, but it's never in the mainstream, and one forgets that it's still really, really popular. Hmm. I mean, earlier this this last summer that went, well, I live now in um, near the coast in. Um, place called Kingsdown and like looking out here I can see the sea. Um but just out of the back of the garden here there's um there's a really old church and I was had my camera with me uh it said last summer and there's a guy sitting in a in a t-shirt a bit like yours and uh, he had a couple of cans of beer with him and I thought this looks like a shot. <laughs> It's a heavy metal guy with all the gear and a church in the background. I, I could see a shot there. So I went up to him and said, I love the T-shirt. And I said, it could be one of mine. And he said, why? Who are you? I said, well, I did some stuff for Cradle of Food. Yeah, them, um, and who are you? I said, Chris, I'm your biggest fan. This is guy completely <laughs> I'm your biggest fan, man. Oh, God, can I, oh, can I, you got anything? Oh, I'd love, so I, um, I, I did him a small print of, of that image. I took it back. And he, he was always down on his luck. He had a few cans of beer with him. And, right. and, a, uh, but, and he was just he's such a nice guy. And, in fact, um, the church warden, who was a neighbour of mine, was letting him stay in the church. Oh, wow. That's, lovely. that's yeah. how sort of kind yeah. people are around here. Yeah. And, uh, and I said, oh, I've met this guy. He said, oh, is it Tom? I said, yeah, Tom. He said, oh, yeah, we let him stay in the church. He can... Wash up in the, you know, use the toilet there and everything. And he was so grateful, it was like you'd given him gold, and it was so sweet. And, uh, and so I went back and I gave him a calendar and, a, and an original print from the um, you know, Principle of Evil. I knocked off a 10 8 print from him and signed it. Well, it, would his, Larry. it would have made his year or something <laughs> yeah. like that. I mean, everything else aside, you know, I mean, that, that random act of kindness from, from the actual creator of the image would, uh, it's something that, I mean, he's got a story now, a story now he's probably told a thousand times over. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. And, but he, he was just a nice guy, you know, and he wasn't, he was sleeping rough. But he looked neat and tidy and, you know, he's looking after himself. And say so there's a few cans on the side there, but, it's, well, you know, who wouldn't if you're uh, sleeping rough, you know? It's, um... Oh, look but at anyway, that. Yeah. Yeah. Quite interesting, I thought, you know, to, to just bump into someone like that. And um, and he had one, of, I don't know if it was my T-shirt, but he had a cradle T-shirt on and stuff. But, yeah. yeah. Does, does it surprise you, though, that, that fans, I mean, it's, I can't think of another band where the band's photographer, meaning you're not actually in the band, but you've done photography work for the band, is known. Okay, so fans know. Yeah, well, I didn't know. This is all news to me, to be honest. Because, uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
it was just a job at the time. And uh, but I was very proud of some of those pictures, particularly that principle of the. I mean, it did it just work that image? And uh, and how it happened I, is a mystery to me, really. But it it was uh, it just worked. The lighting and the and the models and the, the set, you know, the, the the props and everything worked. So, yeah. Well, the V Empire um, one, the Dark Fairy Tales and Palestine one of things is, is iconic too. Uh, I know a lot mm. of people have commented. I've talked about that a lot on the show and people said, yes, mm. I had that T-shirt as well and that was a highly sought-after T-shirt, that one. <laughs> you know. Yeah, and again, I, it, I, 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 they, uh, I, I think I chucked a load of waves when I moved from my last studio. They were, being, they were thrown up in a, in a cupboard and I think a lot of them got mould on them and I oh, chucked them. Yeah. Yeah, really, I should have kept them. But I've got a few oh. still in the garage. Unless you, unless you yeah. press them and put them into some airtight thing, they never last. I've found that too. I used to collect band T-shirts, and they all just they yeah. all, without even wearing them, they become really thin. And you're yeah. like, what what on earth is going on here? And this is away from Silverfish, and we're yeah. Australia, we don't have too many issues like that. Well, not where I'm from anyway. So yeah, they just deteriorate. <laughs> yeah, they do. And uh, but I, you know, I just thought it was going to the rape of Europe too. I thought that was. <laughs> <laughs> very uh very cradle of filth from the period put it that way designed yeah. to offend put it that way but uh, what, what 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 always amazed me they're all nice middle class boys you know quite well spoken you know, but, uh, uh, as we say in england and uh, yeah it's it's uh, and i think a lot of the fans you know i often see that group of lads and they got the long hair and all the gear on and when you hear them talking, they're not talking sort of like, yeah, all right, mate, there you go. They're yeah. sort of quite middle class, educated young guys, you know. And, uh, and I always found that quite interesting about metal music. It seems to attract people with uh, a little bit more going for them, maybe. I don't know. Yeah, d- I'm d- sure you can't generalise, but... No, yeah, it's it's tough to it's hard to generalize, isn't it? But certainly from my experiences talking to people on the YouTube channel, yeah. with, uh, Facebook, yeah. and all of that sort of stuff, I've had some problems with the forums. Uh, they're not like some of oh, my right. hot hot takes, but I don't care about them. You know, I mean, they're just they're not. I don't yeah. find they're as invested. If you like, they're just like they just like to comment <clears throat> and like to shit stir, excuse my language. You know, mm. but um, but gen- the people who contact me directly to a person has just been fantastic. You know, and and that's from mm. Iceland to Britain to the United States, Canada. Yeah. Rarely from Australia. I've, I have bugger all listeners here in Australia, which is really weird. But uh, most of the people yeah. who listen to the show are from from Europe and or, you know, you Britain, you Europe. In North America, and yeah. uh, the the comments that I get, they're just so supportive, and they they know the work that I'm doing here, which is expanding the yeah. cradle of filth conversations. That's what I've put them up on my yeah. website, is, and uh, yeah. they know what I'm trying to do here, so they're very supportive of it. And uh, it's just mm. a case of uh, it's so you know with the cradle of filth thing, for example. There's just such intense interest in that period that you're a part of that mm. everybody that was an engineer, uh, producer. Even people who'd been in the band for say just a tour, this sort of thing, they people want to hear what they've got to say. Mm. Mm. So yeah. there's something well, special if, if about what you're a part of. Yeah, well, you're very welcome to uh, give us a plug, chrisbellphotogallery.com. If you if you're on your website, yeah, that would be nice, and uh, you might get a few people um, who want to buy uh, an original print. You know, I'm so more than happy to to do that. Um, they're not too expensive. Um, no, they're quite reasonably but, priced, really. I had a look. I had a look beforehand. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So. yeah I did. Uh, so they're one off. They're, they're, they're one off made made to order, as it were. I don't, I don't just print them off because the the materials I, I use are so expensive, and you can't just print them off hoping someone will buy them. You just have to do it uh, as and when. So um, mm. yeah, they'll still um, be there in twenty, thirty years' time after you bought them, rather than fading yeah. down like a lot of other stuff will have. Done. Yeah, well, they're all um, uh, you know scanned. The, the negatives are scanned, and the and the negative, the original negatives, are always there. So I can always go back to them, and uh, mm. I should perhaps uh, go through and see if there's any more images that are, uh, you know undiscovered in there, and um, bung them on. But um, I don't know. I just like to get on and take new shots now. I think more than anything. So. Um, yeah, do, do you think you've got enough uh, stuff? I mean, you're very welcome to get in touch again at some point in the future if you if you want to. But uh, I've got plenty. Um, no, but thank you. I'm just really thrilled that you accepted the invite. It's just fantastic. Yeah, no, I knew it would be a great chat. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's um, yeah, it's nice to to 
people appreciate the work, you know. So a lot of the stuff I did was like annual reports and things like that, you know. Like mm. uh, I used to say, I spent like forty years photographing men in suits and girls in frocks, <laughs> and sometimes without frocks. <laughs> and that was the good bit. So. <laughs> we can thank Craig so, uh, Little for that. Yep. <laughs> Yeah, it would be the crazy good stuff, yeah. And uh, that that was good fun. Well, it was all good fun, really. And, um, it's, uh, but it's nice to be in a job that's sort of vaguely creative, uh, even if it's trying to make some jowly, overweight businessman look vaguely normal. Yeah. <laughs> so it's still a skill, I suppose. But but the other thing, too, and I'll, I'll leave you with this one here, your work will yeah. endure well after you've gone, and that's really important. That's something that, that I think I've even said it to the guys in Cradle. It's uh, well after yeah. you've gone, there's going to be kids, God knows how long into the future, they're going to pick up this music mm. and they're going to see your images, and it's going to lift, you know, these might be isolated teams or teams that don't quite fit in or whatever it might be mm. or sometimes, you know, where they do fit in or whatever, but it's going to give mm. them a lift, and that's what it did for mm. me as a kid in a boarding school. You know, I remember listening to it mm. and going, you know, I, I got into Cradle just after I left, I should say, 1996. Yeah. When I sort of, with yeah, 95 was when I was aware of it, 96. Yeah. So I was just first year out. And uh, I can tell you, mate, it, uh, it meant an enormous, it, a lot to me, you know, the imagery, mm. the music, the whole lot, you know, and I didn't have much else going mm. on as a young man, you know, still trying to figure life out. And you see this stuff. And I know that is a story that's repeated again and again and again. Mm. Well, I, I'm uh, I'm honoured. Thank you very much. And um, uh, yeah, if you need anything else at any point, just give us give us a bell. Uh, yeah, no, no worries. No pun intended. There. No pun intended. <laughs> <Give us a bell. laughs> yeah, we'll do. No worries yeah. at all. All right. Well, okay, give my regards to all, the, all, your, all your fans and people and yourself. So it's so, uh, been magnificent. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it. Thank you. What a magnificent chat with a very nice fella, Chris Bell, the album and merchandise photographer from 1992 to 1997 for Cradle of Filth. Awesome, fantastic. I am reaching out to all sorts of people that are collectively speaking in the web of filth, let me call it that, all of the the ex-members, the engineers, the producers, the photographers in this instance, all part of the web of filth. I want them to come on the show and share their story, how they worked with the band or what their experience was. Hopefully, fingers crossed, there are much more to come. Go across to scarsandguitars.com, click on the Cradle of Filth conversations link. There are already almost a dozen conversations posted for your listening pleasure. So that's it from me. My name's Andrew Mackay-Smith and I'm the host of the Scars and Guitars podcast series. I have released a book and there is some more information about the book that I want to share with you. But for now, I want to bid you a fond farewell and until next time, have a good one. This is Eric Rutan of Cannibal Corpse. You are listening to the Scars and Guitars podcast with Andrew Mackay-Smith. I've been the host of the Scars and Guitars podcast since 2017. The first musician I interviewed for the show was David Vincent from Morbid Angel, and things have just snowballed from there. In all, I've posted almost 650 podcast episodes featuring conversations with many of the leading lights of rock, heavy metal, and beyond. It just got to a point where I thought, I need to write a book about all this, so that's exactly what I did. In Scars and Guitars Volume 1, you'll read a heap of deep reveals and commentary, such as Des Fafara talking about Cold Chamber and why the band will never return. You know, if you're a, a band just starting out, you need to hear me. Do not start a band with partners. Ever. Yeah, wise words there. Sage advice, mate, for anybody. Don't ever, because I, I can't go do Cold Chamber right now unless I get others involved. Phil Anselmo talks about the episode in his career, which gives him the greatest sense of accomplishment. I think the staying power of the, the fans and the staying power of the I, of the songs, you know, whether it's Pantera, Down, or Superjoint, the fans remember the songs. Alex Skolnick from Testament confirms that, yes, playing the guitar in Ozzy's band is anything but an ordinary gig. Will Silent Oz from Demu Borgir write a book? Pa from Sabaton gives advice to people who want to start a band. Look at the team around you, look at the bandmates. If uh, if the guys want to be on the stage, then it's all cool. If the guys want to be backstage, 
then it's not going to be cool. Current and former members of Cradle of Filth discuss the band's seminal 90s material. Read about the reaction to George Lynch and Mark from Suicide Silence's comments when they throw shade at then President Donald Trump. We have this idiotic monster, you know, this egotistical, self aggrandizing complete piece of shit in there. I, I, I just I just can't understand how we've gotten to this place. And yeah, we kicked a hornet's nest with Sepultura. Percussive overlord Gene Hoagland talks about recording with Chuck Schuldina. Chuck was always, um, you know, he was, he was very, you know, very open-minded and and he was into having his, his musicians that were playing with him just reach out for, for the best stuff that they had. Phil Campbell from Motorhead discusses what it takes to get sober. John Five answers his critics who dismiss his tenure with Marilyn Manson. You know, my name is John Five and Manson gave me that name and um, I had some of the best years of my life in that band and, and learned a lot. And we get the lowdown on Trey Zagtoth from those who would know, including his mother. All across Scars and Guitars Volume 1, there are moments of tension, relief, tragedy, exhilaration, and throughout it all, you'll obtain insight that I believe no one else has managed to obtain from many of your favourite artists. So treat yourself. Scars and Guitars Volume 1 is currently available as an ebook with a print edition on the horizon. Follow the links attached and download a sample. I'm sure you'll be compelled to read the whole book. <laughs>